Ibn Battuta did very well out of the Turkish nomad sultans. He left every province laden with gifts and money. We continued our journey across lofty mountains to the city of Sinop. A superb city which combines fortification with beautification. Until recently, Sinop was still a fortress city, a Cold War frontier town, NATO's chief listening post on the Black Sea. The former Soviet Union is just 150 miles away. I'm standing at the northernmost point of Turkey, and I come here through Anatolia, where all those years ago Ibn Battuta went from sultan to sultan, visiting the little Turkoman statelets. Over here is the Black Sea, and beyond it is the Crimea, the great steppe lands of Ukraine and Russia. In those days, it was the land of Özbek Khan, who was the Khan of the Golden Horde, one of the four great Mongol rulers. And Ibn Battuta was going there, hoping to get to the big score. Our stay in this place lasted about 40 days, while we were awaiting an occasion to travel by sea to the Crimea. We hired a vessel belonging to the Greeks and remained 11 days more, waiting for a favorable wind. Marhaba beyefendi. Kirima vapur var mı? No. Beni kirima götürür müsün? Kirim? No. No. It's too small. Ah. Kirima vapur var mı? Yok. Yok. Yok, no. Uluslararası, ülkeler arası izin gerekli. We've got these. Kayın, kayık. Ah, the kayık pasaport yok. İzin. Vapur Türkiye'de Karadeniz'de hiç yok. Ha. Yok. Sonra sal, ta ta ta ta ta, kırım, kayı, batar. <gülüyor> I don't want that to ha. happen. <gülüyor> ben batar. I think that was fairly obvious. So it's ta ta ta ta ta, vrrr. Okay. Dead. <gülüyor> Up to heaven, all down to hell. Well that sounds fairly conclusive. It's this old problem of bloody borders, you know, that Ibn Battuta didn't, didn't have to deal with. You know, nobody bothered about passports and ta-ta-ta-ta-ta in those days. İstanbul, yeah. otobüs, uçak. Yeah. Ev, ev. Or air, yeah. It was sound advice. I decided to fly to the Crimea, now part of the Ukraine, and make for the city where Ibn Battuta arrived, Kaffa, today called Feodosia. The Muslim traveler had passed into another world, because Feodosia was ruled by a group of people he'd had very little contact with on his travels so far, Christians. We heard the sound of church bells on every side, and never having heard them before, I was alarmed at this, and bade my companions ascend the minaret, chant the Quran, praise God, and recite the call to prayer. In Muslim tradition, angels flee at the sound of bells. It's not surprising Ibn Battuta was horrified. This town was a Christian trading enclave. He made straight for his comfort zone, the small community of Muslim Tatars. The Tatars are still here today, but only just. During the Second World War, Stalin accused them of collaborating with the Nazis and deported them all to far-flung corners of the Soviet Empire. Badwan's family only recently returned to the Crimea. То есть не родились в период Второй мировой войны, они носили то клейму. И мы даже когда жили, будем так говорить, в депортации, когда родились, наши отцы только это и говорили, что иншаллах наступит тот день, когда мы приедем в Крым. Сегодня, слава Аллаху, мы приехали в Крым. Я в Крыму род... э, женился, и у меня в Крыму родилась доченька, и я думаю, что, иншаллах, это уже есть первые шаги для, э, по, будем так говорить, э, развитию жизни нашего народа в Крыму, иншаллах. Это только маленький пример. 
He made a circuit of the city and found it provided with fine bazaars. But all the inhabitants are infidels. The Russians are Christians. They have red hair, blue eyes and ugly faces and are treacherous folk. I think Ibn Battuta was a little harsh on the Russians. They seemed not unattractive to me. But you can have too much of a good thing. We then hired a wagon and travelled to the city of Stari Krim, a large and fine city in the territories of the illustrious Sultan Muhammad Uzbek Khan. I prepared for my own conveyance a wagon covered with felt, taking with me one of my concubines. Sadly, I had no concubine to take with me. My interpreter Larissa would have to do for the next leg of the journey. I thought I'd try out Ibn Battuta's description of the Russians on her. They have red hair, blue eyes and ugly faces. Wow. Uh, the looks of every people depend on the women that are chosen uh -huh. through generations to, to produce more people. And you know, this means Rus, they chose special sort of women. Like very bu very bullish, yeah. very bullish. Russian men, basically, they choose a wife who's weightlifting. In Ibn Battuta's time, this sleepy village was the capital of the Crimea. Nowadays, there's very little here except for a mosque built by the Tatar ruler Sultan Mohammed Uzbek, a descendant of Genghis Khan. When Ibn Battuta arrived at the court of this Sultan, he was fascinated by his four wives. Thanks a lot. Taitoli is the queen the Sultan most favors. I was told for a fact that the Sultan is enamored of her because of a peculiar property in her. She had, Ibn Battuta says, a certain physical confirmation in her vagina, which she says made her seem like a virgin every night. So, uh, Wow. Uh, Did you consult I, any medical specialist? On the vaginal confirmation of Tatar women? No, I haven't. No, I but this condition. But it, mm. it is possible. Anything could happen. You know? Oh, I, I mean, Ibn Battuta wow. was... No, it, uh, How did he find her? Le, yeah, le, let me just explain it. Ibn Battuta did hear it second hand. He mm -hmm. hadn't had any, of course, uh, any experience himself. I should. But he, he does actually say at the end of this description of, uh, of, of the Queen mm -hmm. um, that he would very much like to do some field work and investigate this phenomenon. Of course, or to prove he's a real journalist then. Yes, well, or, or, that, that, to prove or otherwise. But it was the Sultan's fourth wife who was to change the course of Ibn Battuta's travels. She happened to be the daughter of the Byzantine Emperor and was about to make a trip home to Constantinople. Ibn Battuta spotted an opportunity for a city break. He left the Crimea with a splendid gift from the Sultan. Six years after leaving home as little more than a backpacker, Ibn Battuta was now jingling with cash and hobnobbing with royalty. With the Queen and her retinue of 6,000 guards, he made for the eastern capital of the Christian world. 